Hi crafting friends, welcome to my vlog, my lounge room. Haven't seen you for a while and uh, I'm back. In this episode I'm going to show you my hand quilting. So I've got to do some quilting and my quilting is slow stitching, big stitch. It's very interesting for me to do and I hope it uh, gives you some incentive to try out quilting, hand quilting. Um, I also made three hats. I started off to make one hat for my brother but uh, seeing that was only used up a small amount of the ball of wool I thought mm, I should <laughs> I should make another one. I made three hats out of two balls and still had wool left. So that was amazing, good value. So yeah, so oh, what can I say? I have been, well last week I wasn't feeling well. I had this weird cough and uh, I went to the doctor and the doctor said um, I didn't have COVID. I knew I didn't have COVID. I thought I might have bronchitis. But no, I haven't got bronchitis either. And he said the cough could last for a month. <laughs> Something to look forward to. It's a very weird cough. It's just it's on my chest. We've had a lot of rain. Last weekend, the long weekend, when we changed our clocks, which is, I don't know, what doing the time back just puts everything out, doesn't it? Yesterday seems so long. I mean, at 6 o'clock at night, it seemed like, it seemed like 10 o'clock at night. But yeah, I guess it just takes a while to get used to. And the day was so long. But uh, the long weekend, <coughs> we had a lot of rain here. And for a couple of nights, it was hurricane wind. And I thought the windows would blow in and very strong winds. And out west of Sydney, they had flooding and up the coast. So the, the storm cell came down the coast and brought a lot of wind and a lot of rain and it rained solidly for days about three days and local flooding and a lot of rain but at least the garden was happy and all the trees and the uh, botanical gardens and everywhere got a nice long drink and the dam is full so that's good news and yeah we're in autumn so it's autumn here in the Southern Hemisphere. The humidity has gone. <laughs> oh, that humidity is so draining. Uh, humidity has gone and should start feeling like we can go for walks again. So it should be good. I do have to go up the street, but I'm putting it off until tomorrow, I'm thinking. <laughs> I would like to do a bit of crafting today. We'll see how we go. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this uh, video. Please like and subscribe if you like my content. And uh, great to see you again. Thought I'd show you my quilt that I want to quilt to this week. It's a lovely quilt. Got my tag in it. I'll just go back and show you. I made this a, a while back. It's a, and you may have seen it before. It's a log cabin, basically. It's just a small quilt for a small person. And that's it. It's got a very nice back. I love this fabric. Nice green. Just tell you a bit more about the blocks. I have a fair few solids and I really like working with solids and I thought I would make this block up. It's a 10 inch block and I love the butterfly fabric. I had it in another colourway too, I think. Oh, 
I wish the color is uh, okay. There we go. So yeah, what I did was I I cut out a three inch square. So three and a half to start with. And then maybe I'll put the camera over this way a bit. Oh, I hope you can still see me. Yeah, and then I cut out uh, rectangles. Very basic, very basic block. And very useful. And then I just use the leftovers for the border. I also bound it with the same fabric, which I really like. I sometimes do that, so it matches the back. And I'm going to hand quilt it. So that's going to happen today. Ah, just thought I'd show you the binding again. So the binding is two and a half inch drip, folded in half, same as the back, matches perfectly, <laughs> same fabric. <laughs> and a very easy block to make, especially if you have one fabric that you love a lot and it goes perfectly with solids, I think. Most fabrics go with solids of some sort. I've made this three by four, three blocks by four blocks. And how I did that was, I just uh, sew the blocks into strips of three or either four across. I mean, three across and four down. And then I just sew the blocks together, the strips together. And this is what we have and it's ready to quilt it's not a thick quilt it's a nice little summer quilt or a nice cover for a bed and i'm just i'm not i rarely ever um hand quilt in the ditch my hand quilting is big stitch quilting i have a nice container of all my threads oh, i love this container it has all my beautiful colors in there and I sometimes use one of these and a tailor's chalk a pre-made template for hand quilting a very handy you can do uh, it's especially handy for doing curves I've found but see it fits perfectly there and then you just use your um, show marker it's a nice uh, powdered chalk I really like these it's like using a pen it's a nice um, thin tip with a little wheel on it and yeah, and you can get refills or you just buy a new one, but I've got a couple of them because I really love them. And I also put my pins in here as I go. This container has a lot of fab things in it. Little pin cushion. I think you put that on your finger, but um, I don't. And so today I'm going to use my pearl cottons. I love pearl cottons, um, eight or 12. And for big stitch quilting, they are lovely. They show up really nice. And I used to have a plain back, a uh, solid back for my quilts. And then I decided to do pattern because my friend Judith said, you know, she uses pattern backs. And I thought, oh, do I want to waste, waste, <laughs> not waste now, I realised my um, beautiful fabrics for the back and I thought, mm. oh, phone call. Yeah, so my big stitching 
is uh, even but big. So <laughs> all holds together very nicely. Also, I machine. This one is machine pieced and machine. I'm not going to machine quilt. I'm going to hand quilt. But I sew my binding on by machine. So I sew it on the um, right side first. Then I fold it over and sew it on the back with the machine. It's so much faster, especially for a utility quilt. I know you can see it on the front in the ditch, but after a couple of washes, it won't even be noticeable. And... I want my quilts, these ones that I make, to be used, to be used, you know, put in the washing machine, put on clothesline, or in the dryer even. So, uh, maybe not the dryer. <laughs> I'm going a smidge too far. But yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This is my plan. And now that I have everything that I need, which is very basic for hand quilting, I must say, I have my trusty little pin cushion that my friend Sandra gave me like 20 years ago and the pins still go in it and everything but so cute so yeah I have that and my threads my sticky tape I always use sticky tape when I'm doing straight lines and I'm planning to straight line quilt these blocks so I'm going to do each block separately I'm thinking and I'm just going to do a nice grid I like grids, uh, it's like doing a map for me. So I'm going to go from here to here, which is the size of, no, sorry, from here, the, bl the blue. So I'm going to do from here to here. I'll just get my tape measure, hang on. back. I thought I'd just measure these blocks and make sure that I'm not telling you anything that's wrong. So the blocks finish at 10 inch square. The centers are five, so they were five and a half inch squares. And the rectangles are five and a half by three. So that's uh, cut size, five and a half, three and a half. So I cut strips three and a half inch width of fabric and then just cut them the uh, precise. <laughs> Some things I do very precisely, cut them precisely to the size that I need and then sew them in. This is a very handy block. I don't know what it's called. I imagine it's a traditional block. I love curve pins. I always use curve pins. And I do love hand quilting. I'm going to hand quilt on the table this time because it's a bit warm still to do it in my lap. And I'm going to do from the corner. And I find if I stretch it, you know, it's straight line. But I'm going to do, shall I do it like that? Or I might do the center block first. So when I've got my tape down, I usually put uh, straight pins, these little straight pins, on each side of the tape just to hold it more firmly. You can see that I don't um, thread base my quilts. Just put pins each side of the tape. And this gives a really, you know, really a nice uh, straight line to follow. And it also doesn't move, which we don't want movement. That's that pinned up. I thread my needle up before I cut the thread, just so that make it a little easier. 
and I like a long thread, so I'd say a metre. And this should be enough to do the whole centre block. My needle is just a very sharp little needle with a big eye. And I really like thin, sharp needles because it slides through the fabric. And to start off, I go through the fabric a quarter of an inch from the edge. I don't have knots or things in my threads. I don't like knots. It's just a personal thing. I don't like the thought of breaking threads when the knot goes through. And I just do a back stitch. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then the fun of just a couple of stitches at a time. I also love the sound of the thread going through the fabric. It's just very... And doing this slow stitching very meditative and I can think about all the quilts that I've made and what this one's going to look like when it's finished and who's going to get it and I can feel the needle with my fingers on the back where I'm, grab where I'm grabbing it and I like the look of big stitches on quilts and I like the definition that this um, these beautiful threads give my sewing when I've done it. It's just lovely. And how long have I been making quilts? I've been making quilts since, well, my first one I started when I was 19. I remember it distinctly. I was in bed and I was looking through an old magazine. And it had a picture of a hexagon quilt. And I was hooked. <laughs> it was a beautiful, that was 1974, so a fair while back. And then I joined the Quilters Guild in 1981 when the Quilters Guild started in Australia here. Um, I was one of the, well, I was one of the first members. I was number six number six for years until they decided to change the numbering system and yeah it's competitions I'm not really I say I'm not very competitive you know with anything that I do but I am secretly I must be because I value <laughs> I do value you things that are done well yeah uh, so yeah into my quilts I've entered a few quilts in competitions and that but uh, never won a grand prize so I prefer not to enter competitions that's my rule. I have rules. <laughs> I don't have rules. Now I've come to the end here. And what I'm going to do is... Take the needle with the thread in it. Put it in and go, un go through the layers. Come out the other side of the... And I'm ready to go down this side now. This being a small quilt, I can do this on the table and change it around very easily. Ready to go down this side. And you know, it doesn't take that long. 
Hand quilting, you would think, would take a long time. But it doesn't really. Probably because I do this big stitching. For my red and white quilt that I made, my red and white hexagon quilt, took me 800 hours. 800 hours, friends. It was a lot of hours sitting down, but I made it all in one year. About four months it took me to make it. I hand pieced all the hexagons together. It was uh, uh, 128 flowers. That's seven hexagons sewn together, seven one inch hexagons. And then I hand quilted it. Um, I hand quilted around each one. And I did a maze because, uh, not a maze, uh, a labyrinth. I was really into labyrinths and the idea of a labyrinth and how a labyrinth is uh, not only for exercise, <laughs> but it's a spiritual type of journey where you do a lot of thinking, a lot of meditation on the trip. And I really do like the idea of labyrinths. So I hand quilted a labyrinth into my hand quilt. <laughs> and it was 800 hours. Epic. It is an heirloom. I'll show you it one day. If you have a look at one of my earlier um, videos, though, you will see. See it? Let's take off the tape. And that is what I have. You can see the stitches. Hang on. Here are the stitches close up. So they're very even, but big. And I like these variegated threads, how huh? the colour changes. Variegation threads are my favourites. They're beautiful. And so uh, I will go, I'm going to hand quilt this today. It will take me longer than a day to hand quilt it. It will take a week or two, I'd say. So I'm going to cross hatch this. So when I've done all this way, I'll reverse and go this way. For the edge, I won't do it so uh, the quilting so close together because this will only be the width of the tape, which is about three eighths of an inch. I'll end up with three eighths of an inch diamonds in the centers and on the edge I will have I think maybe straight lines I really like straight lines and as you can see I have no plan <laughs> when I start my quilting sometimes is as you go I think up things that I would like to do with it how I'd like the lines to cut if I'd like to use a template or oh, sorry, template to mark the lines or if I'd use, like to use the tape. And I think this is going to be a fun project today. I'm not going out today. Um, the car has to go to the service station and I'd rather go on the car up the street. So today I'm staying home. Hand quilting. I finished doing the first center square. It only took, um, I would say, 45 minutes. The stitches are not small, they're regular though, and I like the color um, parts of the thread that came out. I had to re-thread another needle because it was getting to the yellow and I thought the yellow was a bit um, strong just for the other colors that I was quilting with. So, I threaded up another needle. I think uh, this is how my stitches always look. They're about that size. This is true to size. And yeah, I think the best um, uh, tips I can give for hand quilting is just practice and take it easy. Always do your stitches in the same method. <laughs> That's just me. But yeah, I find the taking two stitches at a time and rocking the needle in a uniform way helps a lot. I don't use a thimble.
because it's not hard to push the needle through the three layers of cotton and batting. And I like the overall look. So I'm going to do the squares in this uh, pattern and the outside I'm going to do in straight lines. So that should be a breeze. But I'll show you when I've finished it. It should take me about, oh, it'll take a couple of weeks to hand quilt. But yeah, I do like a lot of uh, um, a lot of quilting. Not too big a spaces in between, so I wouldn't go bigger than an inch, I would say, between the quilting rows or lines. It's just me. I like to have everything secure. <laughs> but yeah. Onward and upward with hand quilting. What are your thoughts on hand quilting? Do you love hand quilting? You prefer to send it to a long arm or you like doing it on your uh, domestic machine? I tried it on my, on my domestic machine, but I prefer to, um, machine quilting on my friends, my best friends, Sweet Sixteen. So it's either the machine quilting on the Sweet Sixteen or hand quilting. Okay, let me know what you think on this. This is such an interesting topic and such a relaxing occupation, I would say. I do have a work in project, a work in progress. It's knitting. I put this one away and then I've got it out again. It's a, another hitchhiker. I'm making it with this beautiful coloured uh, ball. <laughs> Can't for the life of me think of what it is at the moment. I think it's a super, uh, Zuba ball. Beautiful. And I'm, knit, I'm knitting it on four millimetre needles. So this is how far I've gotten so far. Colours are beautiful and they're sort of coming out like stripes. Now we'll go up this way because then you can see the teeth. This um, hitchhiker reminds me of dinosaur. <laughs> so it has teeth. So I've got a fair way, but I'm only halfway, so fair way to go yet. Colours are lovely. And I think blue suit me. So yeah, work in progress. I've been uh, wanting to get my projects that I've got finished because I like to have things finished before I start more. But obviously this one was in the box. And then I got onto the hats. <laughs> but yeah, so my work in progress so far. Hopefully to get that done soon. We'll start with the hats. So I wanted to make my brother a hat for his birthday. And I had three, no, four balls of this lovely wool. I love the color, green, it's forest green. And it is beautiful and soft and squishy, heartland. Um, lime brand I bought. I bought this about, well, must be a couple of months ago now. It's acrylic. I don't mind acrylic because it has to go on the washing machine and everything. So I made one hat. <clears throat> I like it a lot. Made it for my brother. It has a nice um, top. I made another one. Another one. These only took me three days to make. I know. <laughs> and I used uh, two balls, and this is what's left over from the second ball. So very economical. And the hats are really nice. I'll tell you how I made them. So they're generic. My generic brand. I made it with this Aran wool, I would say. It's about 10 ply. And I cast on 96 stitches on... 4.5 millimeter needles. I knit for two by twos for nine and a half inches. Then 96 divides perfectly by four. So I had four lots of 
24. I divided that, put markers in for the top and just cast off one stitch each side of the marker every second row until I got to the end and then just um, uh, thread the wool through the, the remaining stitches and sewed it in. So very happy with three hats. <laughs> I was going to make another one with this leftover from this ball, but I decided, and I was going to use mohair with it, but when I cast it on, it was extremely big. So I scrapped that idea and lifted it three. They'll be very nice gifts. I'm very happy. Then I made myself a skirt. I'll show you the skirt now. Decided to cut out the skirt. Uh, this beautiful linen. That's how much I've got left over, quite a bit. But I'm making a skirt and I'm using my linen skirt that I've made as a template. You can see I ran out of fabric and had to use the side pieces. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference from a distance. You know, you can't see it, but it all looks good. So I'm using it as a template. The, wrap, the fabric is 54 inches wide, so that is perfect for a skirt for me. So what I've done is I've just laid the uh, lovely, <laughs> well-fitting skirt on top, made it the same length, cut across. I'm going to have it the width of fabric. And then these skirts are very easy to make, I've got to say. So it only will have one seam in the back, I'll have elastic in the top that is a fold over elastic, um, which is very easy to do. And I put a, a label in the back. I think that's one of Katie Green's cute little things. And yeah, so very easy to make a skirt with me. So if I was uh, a size 10, I'd probably get three skirts out of this fabric but uh, or a nice dress but I'm thinking I will just make the skirt and I've got a lot of other fabric to think about haven't I I could make project bags I could make uh, a bolero type top to go with a black dress oh so many options and the fabric is beautiful so one day you will probably see me wearing faces. <laughs> I'm going to line it. Just forgot about that bit. So what I'm going to line it with is um, very fine lawn. So I'll get a white lawn. I'll get two meters of it and just make a shell inside. And I will attach it to the top. And then I'll fold it over so that it, it's at the top. And it'll form the... Um, elastic tube for the elastic so very easy and then at the bottom I think I will oops uh, <laughs> at the at the hem I will sew the lawn into the hem so that it's it stays down when I've got it on uh, probably wash the lawn first haven't washed the linen I may or may not wash the lawn. <laughs> As you know, I don't block things very much. But, uh, yeah, a nice lined skirt. Hmm. And it is autumn. Doesn't matter. This fabric is suitable for any climate, any zone, <laughs> any weather, really. It's just beautiful. Today I'm on a sewing roll. <laughs> so, guess what happened? I found this beautiful beautiful fabric oh it's just so beautiful it is a Blake a Riley, a Riley Blake design even the uh, salvage is beautiful it is called art journal well it does look like an art journal there's all beautiful writing and things in it so much detail 
Look at these beautiful butterflies. They are just so beautiful, so much detail. Even the bugs. I think that's a bee. I'm so glad there's no roaches in it. <laughs> but isn't that just beautiful? And I'm thinking, will I make a skirt? Will I, folks? Will I, friends? Is this a skirt or what? <laughs> or a quilt? <sighs> I really want to wear it. You know how it is when you get this beautiful fabric and you don't think, oh, I just want to wear it? Well, that's how it is here. So I've cut out one skirt. Will I make another? <sighs> oh. Well, it's such a good uh, decision to have to make, isn't it, really? Tricky, but uh, good. Hmm. How will I look with butterflies all over me and moths? And some beetles. <laughs> I do love the fabric. It is linen. It is beautiful. No, it's not. Sorry, it's cotton. <laughs> but, oh, golly. Something to think about. I guess you will find out in the next episode or two what happens. Mm. So beautiful finish my skirt I like it very much it's linen be nice for just I don't know I hope it looks okay when it's on I haven't tried it on when it's finished yet but I have finished it so I sewed the elastic on the top just like this I'm a very basic sewer I did a French seam down the back I was lucky that the fabric was wide enough um, to fit around me without uh, adding more fabric so that was interesting I think it was 54 inches wide and with the seam allowances um, gave it just a bit of uh, um, what's it called oh, positive ease <laughs> positive ease yes so it's it's really lovely fabric. I did a two and a half inch hem on the bottom. I've still got half the fabric left. And I did a double seam on the um, hem. I work with a black top. I think it's really nice. So that's my new skirt. This is my new skirt. Lots of faces. <laughs> I do like black and white. So I think it looks okay. Here's magpie stealing stuff off the clothesline. This time it's red. There's quite a few of them. They've taken it. There was quite a big red bag. Bags completely com disappeared. I wonder where it is. Probably up a tree there somewhere. <laughs> so funny. Someone will think that their bag has been stolen. Well, it has been nabbed by a bird. Not by a human, though. <laughs> that was such a great backyard. It's my washing down there. Oh no! They're on my t-shirt now. Fighting over it. I have to get John to go down and rescue. <laughs> wow, they're very big birds too. 
So interesting. I've been watching Penelope's Chinwag podcast. I really love Penny. I think she's so much like, has so much in common, I'd say, with my age group. And <laughs> I don't think age has got anything to do with it, really. I think we just have common interests. And she was talking about what's on your windowsill. And I think she got it from Ali. Little Drops are wonderful. Hi, Ali, who likes yellow and chickens too. And yeah, so Penny said to take a short video of what's on my windowsill. This is my kitchen windowsill. I have a very nice clock that I got in, um, in America. I got it in Florida when I was there. Oh, my daughter gave me that uh, cheese board. I think it's called a shiktory. I've had this beautiful um, pot. It's a pot you hang it on the wall for about 30 years. I just love it. I just can't bring myself to give it away. It's cement though, so it's pretty heavy. Then up here I've got a very nice coloured glass bowl that my daughter gave me, Jenny, and a little bee pot, and a Chinese New Year. It's the year of the dragon this year, my year, 1952. <laughs> and up the top I've got a chain of hearts pot. It's a really big heavy one. I've got a nice pot stand here on my windowsill mainly because I haven't got a balcony and this is my indoor garden too. My windowsill is an indoor garden. I've got a lovely fern growing here. It seems to like it. I am trying to grow a fiddle. I think it's called a fiddle leaf uh, vine of some sort. I've got two very nice candle holders and with little doors that you can open. They're closed with a magnet. I think they're lovely and the hot air comes out the top there. My chain of hearts goes down there. This stained glass window uh, John found. <laughs> Just found it on the side of the road a long time ago. Just found it. So I attached it to the window. I think it looks nice. Sun doesn't shine directly on it though because this is a south facing window and I get like two hours a year of sunlight that comes from that angle onto the window. So <laughs> pretty often. Then I found this very nice round potholder thingy. It's got a little um, plant on it that has purple flowers that has never flowered for me and then I've got a test tube pot holder test tube flower holder or something yeah that's my windowsill and then I put some gauze on the window as a uh, mosquito barrier fly barrier thing because I live in an old art deco, deco flat it has really character windows. So yeah, I love it. And I think my windowsill is, I think it, uh, I think a windowsill is like cl um, clothes. It says a lot about the person whose windowsill it is. <laughs> I really love chain of hearts. John got that for me. Leaves are like little hearts. It has purple flowers on it, long, long little tubular purple flowers. So that's my windowsill. Thanks, Penny. So that's me signing off for this episode, friends. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And great to see you again. Bye, friends.